Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the What the Football channel. This is the BH and Scrubber Show. And unfortunately, here today, we're going to come and talk to you about what happened at that uh, last Commanders game versus the Browns. Um, it's uh, it's a, a, a little a mini picture of the whole season, kind of. And so it, it was bad. It looked terrible. We're going to talk about all that stuff today and, and what's in store for us in the future, not only next week. But uh, what what happens after all of that? We might touch on the the, the new uh, what do you call it? The new mascot and some other things that could be coming down the pipe. And uh, of course, I got my boy BH with me here today. BH, uh, welcome, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> Man, <laughs> you know how they say. You know, someone always says. I couldn't get any worse and then, <laughs> and then last Sunday happened. Yeah. Um, it was, wow. uh, and then, and taking in the whole month, the last month of the season to be, uh, Oh, three and one. Yep. And, and then, and then game, I mean, gosh, we talked about it on the last show. This is a beatable team. So team doesn't a lot to, to, to work for there. Uh, it, it was just up for a good, 28 to 13 win control it you know i'm not i mean they're not houston but to come out there and lay that egg um, man yeah. it's uh and it was everybody there was a lot of you know carson wentz um certainly deserves a lot of the blame and and overall play was shoddy disappointed in the players in a lot of ways uh too and um yeah but i think we probably are and we've talked about it, it's no secret that Man, this coaching staff, they just, you know, we taught you who's the CEO, who's the boss, who's yeah. running this show, and who are the top guys, man. And this, you know, it was a team that just wasn't ready. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't ready. I mean, how could you not go out there and play your hearts out and, and, and even get through bad quarterback play and, right. and, and fight to the death? Yeah. You know, like, you know, teams have horrible quarterback play or bad injuries and they just gather guys up because it's a playoff spot. Dude, you fight until you can't breathe almost to get that playoff spot. It's so important. Your whole life, your whole season. Oh, my God, man. 16, 17 weeks of football down to one. And, and you know, yeah, if they played really good and got beat by a field goal, we, you know, we'd be really sad right now. But we wouldn't be doing what we're doing, which is trashing this. Yep. And I mean, and, and it's it's no secret out there in commander's land, you go anywhere, man. Anywhere. And they've had it. They're tired. I mean, they had the pitchforks out in week four. We were kind of laughing because it's like, yeah. come on. You know, <laughs> and we saw the team and we saw we saw them come back. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? I mean, really, just give me your honest opinion of this coaching staff. It was um Ron seems ambivalent. He just doesn't seem like he 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 just seems old to me. He just doesn't seem in touch with what's going on as far as like uh, the OC Scott Turner. I just seen like the running game should have worked, but he wasn't running the running game at the targets where we should have been running. Their middle of their line was weak, and we weren't running it to the left side. They kept running it at uh, uh what's his name Barrett Garrett Miles Garrett. You know, he would switch sides, it seemed like, and they would run the ball. And you're just like, why are you running the ball like that? You know, and he did some more things like, uh, what was it? Uh, I think Robinson stepped out and they did like a jet sweep to Jonathan Williams to try to pick up a first down like they were doing the week before with Curtis Samuel. Yeah. Why are you choosing these plays? It was just terrible and just putting um, Carson Wentz in a bad position it, uh, to just do lousy. And, uh, I, you know, it's funny. I was saying before, too, you know, I didn't really like Del Rio at the beginning of the season. I thought he was terrible. And now he looks like a shining star compared to Ron and to uh, and to Scott Turner, you know. And yeah, just to, like you said, to hear everybody on the Internet you know, they just say the same things we all think. You know, what the hell was going on out there? What were you guys doing out there? And Ron up there at the podium and stuff like that just seemed like he didn't know what was going on. And he just has that same old stick that he says all the time. And 
I want somebody who's going to say something. That's like, tell me, what are you thinking? What is going on here? And so I know our team was banged up. I get that. We didn't have Cam Curl. We didn't have St. Juice. And on our defense, that makes a big difference. But, uh, you know, I don't think Wentz got utilized the way he should have been utilized. He owns part of the blame. Uh, you know, he didn't throw to McLaurin very much. Ah, this whole no. thing was just stinky, dude. Just terrible. Yeah. To sit through that yeah. whole game was just embarrassing. Yeah, I agree. And it was just more of the same, not like the from a offensive standpoint, not knowing who your opponent is, what their strengths and weaknesses are. And um just and 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 Wentz, man, I I, I watched some of it. It was some of the most horrible decisions. I, I don't know. He was so locked on, he wouldn't even look. I saw two plays where on interceptions where one where Cam Sims was running free, didn't even notice him. And on the other one, he threw it to the back of the end zone pretty long throw and it got intercepted but in that play i'm pretty sure it was robinson it i'm pretty but it was the running back whoever the running back was kind of stayed back to block and then schemed snuck out through the line and went out to the right flat it was designed you know his job was to you know be there kind of as a decoy to block and then go out and he went out and there wasn't anybody 20 yards downfield and Carson just locked, locked, locked and threw into double coverage at the back of the end zone. Yep. I couldn't get it. And and even the guy who was reviewing it, he was just perplexed, man. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he goes, I can't even say, well, the safety was here. So he probably thought this. He goes, I don't know what that guy was seeing, except he was just locking on a guy and just forcing the ball in. I, you know. Yeah. If he wasn't ready to play 50, football, 50 ball or something, the 50 50, you know, oh, he'll get it, you know, out of being double coverage in the back of the end. No, no, yeah. I, I saw that review too. That guy did a great breakdown of all of that too. Broke down God. about 10 plays. Yeah. And it was just, yeah. And he just, uh, and if he wasn't ready to play, damn it, man, he should have told the coaches, my, look, guys, I'm sorry. My head is, is not in a good place. I'm just, I'm just not ready for football. Maybe I'm ready to retire. I don't know. Cause that's what it looked, looked like a guy who was, his head was just wasn't into it. I mean, it's not that hard to drop back and he had fairly good protection to see, and you know, the play, you know, this guy goes here, this guy goes here, the running back goes here. I mean, that's the play. They're, they're not yeah. that difficult. You have an idea of who's doing an out, who's doing a cross, who's doing a post, pretty simple stuff. And so he knew he'd be there. That's how the play was designed. And it's like he didn't think. And my God, dude. Yeah, there was 20 yards. He had free range just to, to bust it up the field for at least 10 before someone touched him. So, yeah, it was bad. He was bad. I mean, I also noticed receivers weren't getting open. I will give him that. I watched a lot of plays where they somehow our receivers could not get separation. Man, these guys get separation all the time. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to our receivers. Same thing. Um, I don't know uh, what was going on with them. And why did everybody they everybody gave up, even before the game started. It seemed like they just had conceded to the fact that they weren't going to win and no one was even going to fucking try. Because you know what it, the way the team played all year, barely winning games, tying games, you know, losing the teams they shouldn't lose to, winning last second, only winning because – Deron Payne tipped one and Kendall Full caught it in the end zone. Or or uh, they missed a 62-yard field goal, so we win. Those are that's not winning games. That's nope. not winning a game. It's not at all. And so you can see you're not going to go into the postseason and go up against Dallas, go up against the Eagles, go up against San Francisco again, go up against any of them other teams again and win. You can't even win yeah. the New York Giants. And he should have won that game. They just probably all just yeah. succeeded and said, fuck it, we're out. They must have, because I saw some, even from Jahan Dotson, that young kid who's been such a spark plug for us, he, he would have had a record-setting season if he hadn't uh, hurt that hamstring. Because, you know, in, before the hamstring, he was great. After the hamstring, he was good. And he did a couple slant plays. We talked about slants, and they were saying, and he was so slow and moved and didn't move to the ball. And I'm like, Come on, Jahan, you're better than that. But goes to what you're saying. Maybe there was just a dark cloud over the team. Yep. I tell you what, I was I saw an interview with the coach about three, four weeks ago. And this is what he said. It was disturbing to me. He was talking about here's our philosophy. We have a tough defense. We stuff teams. We keep it 
you know, we keep them from scoring. We keep it low scoring. Our offense, we rely mostly on our run game. We control the clock. We do that. Our defense does that. And then we'll see what happens. And I went, we'll see what happens. Yeah. That to me is defeatist. I get the whole strong run game, great defense. You know who does that really good? It's San Francisco. And yeah. they can still put up 38 points. Yeah. You still have points. You still have opportunities to score. You just don't grind and grind and grind. Every game is at 16 to 12. Right. That's And, and then w- let's see what happens. Well, what you see what happens is you get an on-call on a pass in the end zone that's pass interference. Your kicker misses a field goal. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. And so when he said that, I was it really I thought, man, you've taken this whole philosophy too far, man. This is this is the modern NFL, and right. you can't you, uh, and you just can't win games. Even a team that lives and dies by defense in the run, which is San Francisco, they still are dynamic. They still have make great plays, and they're able to put up 25, 35, 40 points sometimes, yeah. and that's where we're not common. capable. Right, and that's where Ron doesn't take that next step. He just doesn't have that next thing that it takes to make that happen. Like you said, the run game is great. The defense is great, but it still takes something more than that. And and to have Scott Turner designing your plays just doesn't raise it to the next level. It just doesn't. It just keeps it at that level, and you're not ever going to do anything with that. So. Um, you know, I, I'm there with the pitchfork and the sports as myself. I agree. So, and I will say one thing for that I disagree with is it, and it was a horrible watching that film of Wentz, man. I was mad, but I still a lot of people were after the fact were ripping uh the coaching staff for starting Wentz. Now, you and I on the last show were 100 percent start Wentz, I and I personally. It. And I personally still agree. Now we can argue yeah. like, well, maybe should they have pulled Wentz and put Heineke in? We, right. That's another that's argument to have. Yeah. Right. But, but dude, all these guys are saying we should have stuck with Heineke. I'm going, no. what? So we could get 20, we got 20 points against the Giants and we got 12 points in the other game against the Giants. And then we had, we had like 21 the game. He, he just wasn't. No, he just wasn't doing it. He's yeah. not that guy. And we, we, yeah. we love him. And he plays with a lot of heart and he's done some really great things, but he is not the guy. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was really, that was, that was sad. So I, I mean, agree we could, that you they should have, Wentz was the right thing. I thought yeah. it was the right thing. Let Heineke take a rest. Maybe, you know, Wentz can make up for what he was doing. He's been watching this whole time. He's ready to come in. He could do it. He's got all the, the um the things to be able to do it but he just fell right back into his same old same old same old same old bad decisions fucking yeah just just like he looked like it like people say forgive me for aping what they said but like he, when he was with the colts and like when he was with the eagles dude bad decision yep. making just terrible yep so but and uh, uh- Tunnel vision, bad decision making. Yeah, dude, he's six foot five. He should be able to see the whole freaking field. He should be six foot five. He can see over everybody. He should be able to see what's going on. And yet, for some reason, he's just like a statue, dude. He just, yeah, he's a yeah. Dude, and dude, forgive me. Yeah, and we had the benefit of when he came in for Taylor in the game four, where he looked okay, drove us down, yeah, scored, yeah, you know, did pretty good. But, but you know, so we kind of had that going for us, too. Like, oh, okay, yeah. here's a hint. I mean, it's not like he came out there and dropped a turd in the punch bowl. Right. And so, um, but, you know, we can argue off and on, too, about uh, or discuss off and on about, well, w- at what point do you bring Heineke in, maybe? And, and But at the end of the day, man, I think it just looked shot. It just looked like, I mean, maybe Heineke could be the, could have been the, the story and brought us back, I guess. I, I don't know. And and are the players, are they that down on Wentz and, and love Heineke that much that they would come back and play for Heineke? I, I just don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. And at this point, they like you said, across the board, there's so much not very good play anyway. I, I felt like our DBs were out there running around a little loose. I know we were missing, like you said, St. Juice wasn't there and Cam wasn't there. Um, but 
it, it was terrible. And, and, and it, for a chance to go to the playoffs made it even worse. But they shit the bed long before that. It should not have come down to this game. It, like every game that they play, it's the same thing. It shouldn't have come to this Browns game. It shouldn't have come to a, a tip pass by Deron Payne and an interception by Kendall Fuller. It shouldn't have come down to a, a missed 62-yard extra a field goal. It shouldn't have come down to, see, that's their whole season is that. You know what yep. I'm saying? And it shouldn't come down to the Browns. It should have never come down to this game to begin with. It should have been finished off when we came back from the bye week against the Giants. Yep. I probably would have sealed the deal right there, you know, and then San Francisco should have had that one too. Actually the tie before that, the Vikings game. Oh, you know what I'm saying? All this stuff, you know, and just, they don't deserve to go to the playoffs. That's all there is to it. They don't deserve it. Sorry. No. Yeah, they really don't. And like you said, maybe they felt it. So, yeah. well, here comes the big controversy now. Yeah. Um, is now we got the Cowboys. Yep. And uh, they have something how, to play for. Yeah. They, oh, they do. Cause, and they're playing at the same time as the Eagles. So it wouldn't yeah. be like if the Eagles played and won, they'd be like, eh, shoot, let's rest some guys. No, they're playing at the same time and they got a chance. The Eagles yeah. lose and they win. They have a better, uh, Cowboys have a better division record. They could win the division. So how's the starter? Yeah. Dude, it pisses me off to no end. Dude, just throw him out to the fucking wolves. You know, the Cowboys are going to come in there to destroy him. You know, if you're going to put Wentz out at any time, you put him out now. Put him out in the yeah. first half. Let the Cowboys score 28 points in the first half and break Wentz's legs. Then you can bring Howell out and let Howell play against the Cowboys' second string because they already know they're going to win. You know what I'm saying? But just to pull him out there at the very beginning, the fucking Cowboys are going to be foaming at the mouth, dude. They're going to want to kill him. And our front line who couldn't stop fucking, you know, a baby from crawling through a fucking wet paper bag, you know what I'm saying? It, th he's going to get hurt. And if he gets hurt, that's all I'm saying this now, you know, whatever fate that he endures, Coach Ron should endure that same fucking fate. If it's a torn ACL, I want the team to go in there and bend Coach Ron's leg. They're your <laughs> right. torn ACL too. You see yep. what I mean? Because I think they're throwing Sam Howell to the. Oops, can you see it? <laughs> Where is it? There it is. Uh, Number 14. My, my stupid thing won't get it. There it is. 14. <laughs> there it is. Sam Howell. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, I think they're throwing him to the wolves. I think it's a terrible decision. Um, oh, well, let's see what he can do. What in the last game of the season against the Cowboys, who have everything to gain by kicking our ass? That's no way to look at what somebody can do. Huh? Yeah, I mean, and unless you know, unless uh, they run an offense that is quick passing and tons of run, in other words, say we're not going to expose this kid. So we have a few throws, but, you know, we know we can't make the playoffs. So that by the only saving grace is if they had a very, you know, run centric offense, quick throws, and then didn't, you know, not a bunch of five and seven step drops. But other than that, well, it's, it's set. So there's nothing we can do Who's about it. Run the ball. And Who's Brian got, Robinson's pretty beat up. We're probably not going to have Antonio Gibson. Right? Yeah, I don't think Gibson's coming back. You think Jared uh, Patterson run? I think it'll probably be Williams. I think Robinson will play, but I think it'll be a Robinson Williams. And uh, you don't think Robinson will play? No, he's I don't know. Not, I mean, but I mean, he's not. He's not a hundred percent. There's no real incentive for him to go out there and get his ass beat either. Yeah, but yeah, so they'll have to go. I think they'll have, like you said, do a three-headed monster kind of use a little bit of all of them and try and generate something with this uh, offensive line that run blocks better than they. Pass that's block. True. That's true. That's that's the only thing that'll save them there. Maybe the defense can step up. I don't know if – I mean, at this point, like you said, why – if Cam is still nursing an injury, if St. Juice is still nursing an ankle, they're not coming back. Nope. You know, there's no reason to have them I go out there and get – I would come back. I'd be like, no. my ankle. No, coach, I can't. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I can't do it. Sorry. 
I twisted my, my finger. Well, we're yeah. going to see him regardless. So let's hope yes. that that he is the shining star because th- <sighs> looking into next year, you look at draft positions, all the best quarterbacks are going to go within the first six picks. If you want to move up from wherever we're going to end up, which is, you know, 14 to 10, you got to give up two first round picks. And, you know, yeah. so you got to just give up your draft. So do you do that? Or maybe we go Hal and Heineke yeah. and a developmental guy. You know, there's free agents now. There's no one out there that I love, but all things are probably going to be on the table again. Um, but then what do you give up for a free agent? What do you give up for someone like a Derek Carr? I mean, he's just okay. He's a step up, but they're going to want to, they want a second. They want next year's first. So once again, you're gutting your team. I guess I would just say, go with, um, let Wentz go and just go in, give Taylor a little more money. You know, he's got, give him some starter money, not a whole lot and get, um, and Sam Howell, let him fight it out. And one of them is going to be the starter. Now, this was not last year's draft was a terrible quarterback drop draft. All the pundits said it would be, and they were all right. None of those guys were hardly even ready, except for Brock Purdy, the last player taken in the entire draft. Now, he did drop into a pretty good system with a lot of good players. So, you know, it's it, it he had a nice system, but hey, can't take nothing away from that kid. When he gets in the red zone, he throws touchdowns. Do that. Had only 38 yards passing and two touchdowns. See, whereas Taylor's the opposite. He could have 140 yards. And, and when he gets in the red zone, he just craps the bed. This Purdy kid knows how to throw a touchdown in the end zone, man. And he's and he's done it before. Yeah. So, um, but it was really a bad draft. And now no reflection on Sam Howe. He, you know, let, he's we're gonna see what he can do. No, it doesn't matter where you were drafted. Once you get an opportunity, you get it. But most of these guys who have had an opportunity and played in this draft. The predictions were right. It was a pretty weak draft. There's no one coming out of there that really looks all that good. So we just hope that Sam's something special. But go, God, going into good. next year, yeah, next year's going to be weird. Um, so I say, you know, I don't. Lance, obviously, gone. And take that money and and dude, everybody screams, "Oh, the Hogs from such and such and such and such. We won so many Super Bowls, whatever." Well, what does that tell you? What won the Super Bowl? Sonny Jurgensen, some good special quarterback? No. The, the, it was the front line that won these Super Bowls or got them to where they got with three different quarterbacks. Didn't matter who the yep. quarterback was. It was the front line that made it. When Russell Wilson won the Super Bowl in 2013, I had to endure the Seahawks for many, many years. It was the number one highest paid front line in the NFL, and they gutted the motherfuckers the next year, and they were gone. Okong, all of them were all gone the very next year. And what did they do? Nothing. His stats still look good. Yeah, he continues to do that. His stats look great every game. I don't know how the fuck he does that. But yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's the front line that wins. And with $29 million, if you got rid of wins, $29 million divided by five, is five, almost six million dollars per front line person. That's pretty good money for a front line, right? Yeah, it depends. Like a left tackle or right tackles or more. But to your point, yeah, there's plenty of money to get, you know, find some offensive guard, get the best free agent guard, uh, get a, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe you burn the draft. You know, I was saying get a center. I mean, you wait to the second yeah. or third round, but get there's every year there's plug and play centers from Iowa, Minnesota, these big guys that come in and they can play. Get the best plug and play center because center's a disaster. Um, and and yeah, get, get the best guard you can and maybe look at a left tackle. Um, do something. You can get all that early the, in the draft, right? You can get the yeah. best ones early in the draft. Yeah. Or you can, yeah, and you, really you can get a good guard. Uh, in the third round, a center okay. in the second. Yeah, you okay. can do that. You can use your first round on a an elite whatever, I don't know, right. linebacker or, or a corner if you want. But the value is still there for great guys that can start. And then get a free agent. Get the top free agent offensive guard. There's a couple of them out there. you got to get – we've got to move our guards out. Our, our guards and center 
our tackles, you know, they get beat every now and then and they've had problems. But overall, man, I feel like the center of our line, there's no meat, there's no hogs. There's no guys that are just moving people out. Right. And yeah, we need, they need to fix that because when looking at the roster, I think we have a better roster than the giants do, mm -hmm. but they're coaching. They play so much better. I mean, I look at our defensive players and I look at, they've got good defensive players, but man, player by player, you look at our team, but their defense plays way better. And it goes to what we said in the beginning. It's coaching, yeah. you know, I, yeah. and I think we have more, we have more, I mean, they have Barkley, but we got a ton of, we got some good running backs and we have a ton better receivers on this team and still their offense looks better. Dude, how does so. it not utilize that, that threesome that we have better than they did? It's just crazy to me. Just crazy. It is. So, yeah, it's going to be, um, you know, we got so many crazy things happening with ownership coming up. And, you know, does, you know, you can't really, you can't, you know, you fire the coach, but then you have to, you have to hire a coach. So when you hire that coach, he gets a five year contract. So let's say they fire coach Ron and they hire, so you've got to give a guy a five, six, seven million dollar deal, whoever it is. And then the new owner has to come in. Well, what, you know, he might not like him. I, you know, it's sort of a, it's a crappy time because a lot of times if the new ownership gets approved, it could be very good for a lot of things. They could clear out the staff, all new, all new um, coaching, uh, college scouts. I mean, from the bottom up, they could just gut it. The guy says, I'm going to build a new stadium. Great. We're going to get a new stadium and, and everything's great. But the problem is you got, I think they have to get approved by the owners, which is always at the owner's meeting in March. And by March, we were talking about it. all the hot coaches are gone. It's too late. You have to have your, you have to have your draft set up, your scout. I mean, you got to be ready for the damn draft, you, you know, because next thing you know, you can't just throw a coaching staff together in March. It just, I don't think it happens. So we're, it's just going to be crazy to see how it all plays out yeah. um, look good. because and no, it doesn't. So I don't know what they're going to do with coach, but um, it, man, I mean, if we go back, if next year, if it, the season ends and Snyder says, nah, we're going to stick with this coaching staff and, you know, we'll see what happens, man, the fans, it's going to be a meltdown and that he might not care. He's waiting for that $7.2 billion for the thing. He could probably give a crap. Um, hey, but despite everything being bad, we got a new mascot. Oh, God, don't get me started on that. Lord have mercy. What a debacle that is. What a tragedy that is. It just continues, dude. It's a stink fest. Lord have mercy. It, Major yeah, Tuck. It's like, what the it, f is that? It was what awful, was man. I wasn't expecting. Did they kind of pre announce it? I missed it. I guess they did, did they there kind was of a say list of names that they had, and I forget what they were. Something stupid. Tutty was at the top of the list, and a Tutty is a touchdown and new uh, nomenclature. I think uh, Aaron Rodgers or somebody had come up with that one. Somebody did. Chris Collins were somebody, and so Tutty oh, okay. is a touchdown and just uh, and it's a hog and it doesn't. How is a hog a commander? How is a and he's major cutty? How is a major a, a commander? How does any of that fit? I don't get it. I just yeah. I, I don't fucking get it for one second. A commander, I think, is yep. lower in rank than a commander. He's a major. We're the commander. How do you miss that? Why isn't it commander cutty? Help yeah, <laughs> it was a major screw up, you know, that yeah, every time they seem like they want to try and do something. I mean, like if they announced anything, hey, we're going to do new uniforms for the uh, cheerleaders. I go, no, 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 yeah, don't. no, no, don't yeah. don't do anything. Blue no, stop. Don't. Stupid. Yeah, don't do anything because everything you've done, the Sean Taylor exhibit, that stupid ah. Mannequin that was what was that? It was terrible. I mean, it, yeah, it's just it was just one thing after another. So, like you said, well, man, a bronze statue, a nice life size something with his yep. form on, like you said, should just been something just nice, generic. You know what I mean? But they do that. What the hell was that, dude? It looked grotesque. It did. It, it looked like a temp. I thought it was a temporary thing. When I saw it, I, they said, yeah, we, 
the guy making the bronze one out in Ohio had some issues. Yeah. It's coming. So he just hung his uniform here. We're still going to have the ceremony, but don't worry. Yeah. The bronze one is on the way. Everything they touch turns to shit, dude. Is yeah. Weird. So um, we're going to have to, um, you know, I, th I think the one good thing we have with this team is, God, there's enough good young players out there. Um to build around it's not you know it's not a complete disaster so they don't we're gonna have to have some yeah yeah if they don't yeah and hopefully get them get them under contract and extend people but see that's another thing like did they not extend to ron Payne because because the owner said no we're not you know no big contracts i we don't know what's going on behind the scenes i mean we we can't tell but why wouldn't you extend him they didn't extend anybody they could. Or I think they might. I mean, they really didn't even make any moves to extend Cole. Now, he got hurt, but he was coming up to where he would have been a guy you could extend with a really good deal and keep him in house. that wouldn't cost a lot, but nothing ever seemed like no one was moving towards an extension. So and there'll be a ton of teams out there with that want Duran. No problem. He'll get a he'll get he'll get a big fat contract. Well, a lot of them guys will go to free agency. Yep. Well, man, are you gonna um you gonna stream the game? Yeah, I'm gonna be out there, man. I'll be there. I'll show up. We can do, we'll be our last game. We, I'll be in. We'll do the stream together. Yeah. Um, I think it's just like four something in the afternoon. I think it's a, a afternoon game. My it time. is. It's one. Yeah, one twenty-five my time. So yeah, let's uh, let's get in there. Uh, hope for the best, man. Just. See if something comes up, and then, then we have to get ready to, uh, you know, the off season. We'll have to start uh, looking at what shows we're going to have to have because, man, there's announcements are coming up. Man, there's going to be changes. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, we'll see, and then we'll do a we'll just we'll do an end of the season show. We'll just rerun this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll just call it a new episode and run uh. it again. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was brutal, man. Well, you got to take down your division rival. You're going to play the Cowboys. Everything seems like it's against us. Looks like uh, it could be a route. Um, but we'll be there. Let's hope yeah. we get a bunch of people in. Uh, if maybe they'll shock us and do good, and we get a bunch of people in the chat. Yeah, you know, let's hope the people come in the chat. You know, they're 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 going to come in the chat. I know Chris and Veronica and all them. They'll they'll be there. And we might as well come. Yep. Together very end and you know we talked about this earlier too you, you can't go any further down from here can you i mean not really i mean the expectation is no game so i mean how how could it get fucking worse i just don't yeah know. like it yeah if they went out there and got rolled we wouldn't feel any worse right yeah because this was losing to cleveland and being knocked out of the playoffs yeah. Uh, that was about as low as it gets in the yeah. way it happened. Yeah. So Dallas is probably going to roll all over us. I just feel bad for Sam Howell uh, and coach. Uh, it's going to be on his fucking, it's going to be on him when something happens. Yep. I Let's just hope he expect it to happen. I really do. He's going to get clobbered. Yeah. Yeah, man. It doesn't look good. If, if they can't keep protection for Taylor and for, uh, for Wentz, how are they going to do it for him? But the guys might play uh, harder for him, knowing that he's a rook and that kind of stuff. So you got to hope, yeah. And you know what? You got nothing to lose. Last game of the season, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they couldn't take the pressure. Maybe the pressure of playing to win a playoff game was too much. Yeah, you know, but that's not good. That's not a very well coach. You coach your team to play under pressure, and it gets back to what we're saying. This coaching staff, we need a huge shakeup. So. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Dallas is coming for us, dude. They're not gonna they're not gonna play nice. So no, they're not. All right, dog. Good show. Sorry everybody we had to shit all over this, but it's uh you know, it is what it is. So and and with hope for the future that things will get better. Yep. So. Yep. All right, thanks everybody. <laughs>